Hi, everyone. In today's hyper-competitive market, ignoring these subtle shifts in consumer or customer behavior could be a costly mistake, especially for packaging resellers. Now, here's a recent case study involving the Cleveland Clinic that should open any packaging reseller's eyes that there's gold right there in front of you. Packaging resellers right now in this market that fail to recognize how their consumers and customers are changing, how they should penetrate an account differently, you're going to be on the outside looking in. I'm telling you, the future of your business here is at stake. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do this even if you know nothing about penetrating an account deeper or selling a particular type of package. Cleveland, Ohio, since I've been here in, in the mid-80s, the Cleveland Clinic is a massive giant. What does it have to do with packaging? I'll get to that in a second. The Cleveland Clinic owns like half the city, whether it be in real estate, office complexes, medical facilities, and things like that. So it's a massive organization, and it continues to grow. So the case study here in particular is regarding a packaging reseller in Cleveland. Now, I hear this all the time and it drives me crazy where packaging resellers will say I, I can't make any money in this market or I don't know how I'm going to survive and what am I going to possibly do in order to get past making a salary what's been happening here which is should be troubling to any packaging reseller is the fact that packaging reseller the companies are beginning to let their reps go they're beginning to either take their salary away they're taking their company car away for the underperforming and there's lots of them right now because the economy is really wonky. So back to the Cleveland. So packaging reseller came to me and was like, we sell the Cleveland Clinic. How could we possibly grow that account? This is a fundamental issue with packaging resellers right now. And, and I think if there's anybody out there individually or companies that can kind of get this, here's the deal. Most packaging resellers are used to selling commodity items. That's it. They know the bubble wrap. They know pallets. They certainly want to sell companies' machinery. They are stuck buying their stretch wrap or tape, but they're ignoring all these other things that are right in front of them. The Cleveland Clinic was buying from a packaging reseller, probably still is for all I know, whether it be envelopes, copy paper, pallets, garbage bags. I mean, that's the commodity BS crap that's out there, but everybody is trying to sell that. But what I said to them specifically was, why are you chasing after or trying to sell the same piece of pie? What about selling them packaging that you know they have problems with? Every big company is having problems with their packaging right now. This is a major issue and packaging resellers are not paying attention to this. The key problem right now is the fact that their suppliers, I don't care where they're getting this stuff, whatever the product is, Cleveland Clinic in this case, they are having problems with lead times. They are having problems with quality. They are having problems where their suppliers giving them full, complete shipments. How do I know this? Because I'm at that front line. I see it every day. I hear from companies every single day that are saying, my supplier is going to be six weeks late. What? What? It was due today. And You've got companies that just don't care. You've got companies that are just happy to survive. You've got sales reps that are just happy to take an order and then their job is done. You've got companies that are okay with like selling half shipments just to try to keep everybody a little happy. That's nonsense. There are companies out here right now, suppliers, high end, highly specialized, fully certified that can actually make what in this case, the Cleveland Clinic needs. All right, so back to this, the case study. When I got involved, I explained that there are these segments in the Cleveland Clinic, just like all hospitals, there's medical grade packaging. Medical grade packaging is certainly not bubble wrap and tape. First of all, th they got to understand or they needed to understand what the terminology was. So things like autoclave, sterilization packaging, high temperature films, high temperature tape, because a lot of this stuff in hospitals hospital environments are cleaned with high temperature and water and heat. So there's all these kind of things in here. So first of all, knowing that terminology. Second of all, they needed to understand that in order to kind of get involved with this, their regular person, their regular buyer that buys bubble wrap is not that person. And I'll tie this together because part of what we had to do was to 
at least prop them up in a way. And again, I got involved and I was able to kind of, the nice thing is, is they didn't have to necessarily teach or train somebody. I became their specialized packaging expert. So suddenly they were able to hear me discuss with the Cleveland Clinic people. Initially, the buyer that they were dealing with led me to another person who was not the buyer that led me to another person. But finally, after several different steps and iterations, we found out who that person was. And by the way, wasn't a buyer. That's the key thing. Was not a buyer. Specialized packaging is rarely handled initially by, you know, Betty the clerk or Bob the clerk buyer. So once we found that particular person, then I was able to kind of have a conversation with them about certain types of medical packaging. Now, being able to drop those keywords in them and say autoclave, high temperature films, what kind of equipment do you have right now to clean your instruments? Are you doing that on site? Are you using an outsourced company that comes in? Being able to talk the talk puts them at ease like I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm actually trying to help them. That's another thing here, packaging resellers. Stop trying to sell stuff. Try to sincerely help your customers and then it'll come across and they'll be willing to tell you more. So anyhow, as it goes on, this particular person, you know, if, at first, I guarantee you, you're going to have people that are going to go, no, everything's fine. And he's great because nobody wants people that are in positions like this are overworked, underpaid. So the last thing they want to do is create more work for themselves. So this is another key point here in this case study. I told them, now, now listen, Sam or Bob or whatever his name was, I'll handle the information. I'm not looking for you to create work for you. So you have to look something up. All I'm asking you to tell me is, are these big, massive shrouds and autoclave in this particular case? Case, or are they small little autoclave for the medical instruments? Ironically, at this particular point, the guy kind of let me in on the fact that it was the big huge shrouds that go over like when they roll in a cart in surgery that's kind of like already gone through the sterilization process okay it's already clean it's already sterilized ready to go and then when that's done all that stuff is taken out and sent to a cleaning facility okay some places have it on site some places take it off they bring in their own equipment to do it my point with this is that he began to let me know what the situation was as i found out they had no problem with the small little medical grade sterilization packets for scalpels and tweezers or whatever it is. But these big things are difficult to get. While they don't buy gazillions of them, they're extremely expensive and finding a reputable company that makes them or holds them or has them in stock, another key thing packaging resellers, is the game changer. So part of this was literally, in this particular case, the first step was not to sell them anything. The first step was have a conversation, was to mention, would it be helpful for you, Sam, to have somebody that not only has these big medical shrouds, we had them in stock, meaning we would always have a release ahead of time, meaning they're probably not on the shelf anywhere. The point is, is that we would take your order and run a release ahead. We would do something where we could actually put you at ease that you know will never run out. Because again, if a, if a hospital can't clean their instruments and their equipment, they can't do surgeries. They can't do surgeries. There's no money. Suddenly, I just left that on his mind and I backed away. And I backed away to the point where I basically just said, great, thanks for the information. We're going to get back to you. We'll follow up here shortly. And if it's okay with you, are you and I okay to connect? And you know, a lot of things with packaging resellers, they're so afraid of companies or people in my team that are going to go around them or, oh God, you're going to sell them direct. My team wants nothing to do. We want to partner with a reseller. We want to partner with these guys that can actually help us really expand our reach. None of these guys like me and our team are here and screw around with trying to go around. My point was with this is that I wanted to build a rapport and relationship with Sam. And I wanted to make sure I left him with a, wow, this guy does know what he's talking about. And he isn't trying to sell me anything and he isn't pushing for a close. So my point with this initial steps on this case study is to give you the background that there's gold at your footsteps, packaging resellers. 
The Cleveland Clinic is just one example. Then I also shared how we got in the door using the, our existing contact that buys commodity stuff. Then we use that to penetrate and find out I mean, it took several calls and a couple different appointments to get to that decision maker. And then what we did, which is absolutely critical, we just asked for information. I didn't push to close. I didn't quote them on the spot. I didn't come up with any pricing. None of this nonsense. This is a dance. It's a long dance. But if you do it right, you're going to you're going to nail it and not only are you going to nail it but they're going to be customers for life and not only are they going to be customers for life but you're going to be making 20 30 40% profit margin over and over and over again and that's going to lead you not only to if you really still want it to sell them your commodity stuff but it's going to vault you into a whole different stratosphere when it comes to being a partner for in this case Cleveland so I've thrown a lot at you for the initial case study. So how do we go about, let's just take it to the next level. So how do we go in a step two in this case study? Okay, we've got the Cleveland Clinic. We're having an appointment, but I know nothing about autoclave packaging. And I know nothing about how to position it for sale. And I know nothing about how to handle the objections or even the questions that these people have. Well, Fortunately, I've done a next video on the case study, and I think it'll dig in a little bit deeper. But this was case study number one. Stay tuned because this will lead into how we're going to position this for sale, and then we're going to nail it. Thanks.